What do archaeologists, pirates, and metal detectorists have in common? They're all obsessed with finding treasure. Making an important treasure discovery is easier said than done, but when it does happen, it can be life-changing for both the person that finds it and the experts who study it. Even among treasure discoveries, there are some that matter more than others, though, and it's the story of those discoveries you're about to see in this video. Coin discoveries are so common that you need to make a spectacular one if you want to stand out from the crowd. And spectacular is definitely how we'd describe this Swiss treasure discovery from late 2015. It's an enormous collection of more than 4,000 silver and bronze ancient Roman coins, which were buried beneath a Swiss cherry orchard in Uken until the farmer who owns the orchard discovered them by accident while trying to flatten a molehill. He immediately contacted the Swiss Archaeology Service, who confirmed it was the single largest Roman coin find in Swiss history. The majority of the coins were minted during the time of Emperor Aurelian in the year 274 and beyond, with a few from Emperor Maximian's time. The most recent coins in the collection come from the year 294. Such is the condition of the coins that it's thought they never went into general circulation after being minted and instead were held as the savings of either a wealthy individual or institution. Whoever owned them obviously never came back for their money. We can't help but wonder why. A shipwreck is a good place to go looking for treasure if you have the necessary equipment and resources to do so. Underwater archaeologists have been recovering ancient treasures from around the Greek island of Kassos for several years, but in late 2020, an ancient Roman shipwreck was identified in the vicinity. It's hoped that the treasures on it will give us a greater insight into the history of Mediterranean trade. Because of Kassos's position between Crete and Carpathos, it was a vital stop on the ancient trade route that connected the Aegean with the Middle East. It's also an archaeologically significant island because it was once populated by the Minoans and played a role in the Trojan War by building ships. So far, treasures obtained from the sunken 2,300-year-old ship include amphorae, tableware, wine, and food. It's understood that larger treasures are hiding within the wreck, and although they'll be difficult to extract, it's these as-yet-unseen treasures that may have the most to say about this ancient shipping route. Of course, the real mystery is how a full-sized Roman shipwreck has stayed hidden for so long in an area that's so well known to archaeologists. Millions of people all over the world are obsessed with money today, but money hasn't always existed. In the time before money, people had to use other things to barter and trade with. Thanks to a spate of recent discoveries in mainland Europe, we're beginning to get a better idea of what these pre-coinage forms of currency looked like. It appears that in the early Bronze Age, these rib-shaped bronze artifacts were used in bartering. They came in standardized shapes and weights, which would have made it easy for traders to determine quantities and values. Ribs weren't the only form of currency in use in Bronze Age Europe, though. Archaeologists have also found rings and even axe blades that appear to have been used for the same purpose. The objects aren't totally identical to each other, but they're close enough for the average human not to notice the difference. It's fairly easy for us to work out the exchange rate between the US dollar and the euro today, but working out the correct exchange rate between an axe head and a rib might have been a little more difficult. So many people have gone in search of Captain Kidd's legendary treasure without success that the story of its loss was thought to be a myth. That was until 2015 when, if the story is to be believed, the first evidence of the treasure was found in the waters of Madagascar. Captain Kidd was a 17th century Scottish pirate who was noted for his success, but also his brutality. He was appointed by the British government to fight pirates, but switched sides and became one of the most prolific pirates of his era until he was captured and executed in 1701. American explorer Barry Clifford claims to have located the treasure, and in evidence, he's presented an eight-pound engraved silver bar, which, according to him, comes from the wreck of Kidd's vessel, named the Adventure Galley. The vessel is believed to have sunk in 1698, 
fully laden with kids' ill-gotten gains. Clifford claims to have seen much more treasure in the vicinity of this bar and the shipwreck, but so far this one silver bar is the only evidence he's provided. The Hidden Sea Treasure is another of history's great treasure collections, and unlike Captain Kidd's treasure, there's no debate that this one exists. It's the largest and most valuable collection of Viking jewelry ever discovered in Germany, and it was found on the tiny island of Hiddensee in 1873. It's thought to have been manufactured during the 10th century and might even have belonged to the family of Harald Bluetooth, the legendary Danish king. Losing this treasure collection must have been a huge blow to the family, and the loss appears to have happened at sea. It wasn't found until it was washed up on Neuendorf Beach after a storm, where it was recovered by local fishermen. Aside from its importance from a historical perspective, the collection is also notable because it contains some of the finest examples of ancient Scandinavian goldsmithery. While history often writes the Vikings off as violent, marauding savages, the existence of treasures like these reminds us that they were also highly capable artisans and enjoyed a rich cultural life. All 16 items that make up the treasure are now displayed at the Strasland Museum of Cultural History. Our next treasure discovery is every bit as significant to British historians as the Hidden Z treasure is to the Danes. It's spoken about in almost biblical terms. This collection of 6,000 gold artifacts, valued at more than $5 million, is thought to be the war hoard of Mercian King Penda, taken by the king from Anglo-Saxon regions during the so-called Holy War of the Dark Ages in the year 650. Amazingly, the supremely valuable treasure was discovered by an amateur archaeologist using a $5 second-hand metal detector in fields close to Litchfield in 2009. Among the many artifacts in the collection is a religious battle shrine, which appears to have been deliberately broken before being intentionally buried. The collection is now known as the Staffordshire Hoard, and comes from a time in history when gold suddenly became much easier to acquire, and so was sculpted and molded into golden artifacts for warrior kings and their allies. It's likely that the hoard was buried for safekeeping with the intention of coming back for it one day, but obviously, that day never came until that lucky metal detectorist turned up almost 1,400 years later. Warlords often build up treasure collections as they successfully invaded and conquered territories, and there may have been no warlord in history more successful than Genghis Khan. Unsurprisingly, the capital city of his former empire in Central Asia has turned up plenty of fine treasures over the years. Stunning 14th century gold alloy bracelets are par for the course when it comes to discoveries at the old Mongol capital of Karakorum, which once hosted the fabulous palace of the Great Khan. Legend has it that the palace contained such riches that even the fountains were made from silver, and although that silver fountain is yet to be found, enough artifacts have been recovered recently for archaeologists to feel fairly confident that they found the site of the destroyed building. It seems that Khan was quite a collector. Aside from all the gold items, archaeologists have recovered obsidian masks, fine Chinese pottery, Arabic coins, and Chinese turret decorations that were presumably once on the roof. Historians sometimes say that the Mongols didn't have an artistic tradition of their own. Looking at these treasures, it strikes us that they didn't need to. They simply went out and stole everybody else's. If you want to go and see the Shores treasury today, you'll have to travel to the British Museum. It wasn't discovered there, though. As the name implies, this treasure hoard was found in the village of Shores in northern France in 1883, and is still the only thing the village is known for more than a century later. This is an incredible collection of Roman silver, dating back to the 2nd and 3rd centuries. It's among the most ornate and beautiful table service collections ever found anywhere in the world, and it all appears to have belonged to one family, 
Many of the plates are inscribed with the names Caverianus and Genialis, leading historians to believe these are the names of the original owners. If that's true, Caverianus and Genialis had impeccable taste. Of the 39 artifacts that make up the hoard, 38 are silver. The only exception is an ornate mirror made of bronze and silver. People are sometimes thrown by the presence of a swastika at the center of one of the silver plates, but the symbol doesn't mean the collection was defaced by the Nazis. It simply comes from a time long before the symbol came to take on an unpleasant meaning during the 20th century. We're heading back to England now to check out the Winchester Hoard, which was hailed as the first great British archaeological discovery of the 21st century when it was found by amateur metal detectorist Kevin Halls in a field in Winchester in late 2000. In truth, this collection of Iron Age gold artifacts would have been an impressive discovery in any century, no matter how early in the century it might have occurred. The inherent value of the hoard is obvious because of its high gold content, but it's a discovery that comes with a mystery. There's no sign of an ancient temple, or even an ancient settlement, anywhere near the farmer's land where the discovery was made. Without that evidence, we have to conclude that the collection was deliberately carried far from civilization and buried on what would then have been woodland. Presumably, whoever buried it wanted to ensure that nobody would ever find it. Perhaps they hid it so well that they were unable to find it themselves. The design of the pieces is typical of the Latin style that was popular more than 2,000 years ago, and are some of the best examples of their kind. That goes some way to explaining why the total collection has been valued at more than half a million dollars. A few moments ago, we discussed the idea that the Vikings are sometimes unfairly portrayed as uncultured warriors. Perhaps we should make the same point about the Celts. Like the Vikings, they also fought and pillaged their way across much of Europe. But also like the Vikings, they were gifted craftspeople and made some incredible objects. You'll find the best of their wares on display at the British Museum, where you'll find another link between them and the Vikings. While the idea that Vikings wore pointed helmets is a myth, the Celts genuinely did wear horned helmets, and some of them have made the display. The bulk of the most fascinating items come from the Eton Bronze Age Hoard, which contains a collection of axes and spearheads dating back more than 4,000 years. From that alone, we can see that the Celts were capable of manufacturing weaponry on an almost industrial scale. The Battersea Shield is also a stunning artifact, though, showcasing the finest artisanal defensive weapon design of 2,700 years ago. From swords with iron and glass inlays to bronze animal-shaped battle horns, the Celts were incredibly innovative. Next up, we have the treasure of Nagzent Miklos, and while that might be tough to pronounce, it's well worth taking the time to understand and appreciate it. This is one of the most outstanding treasure collections of the early Middle Ages in Europe. It was found inside a discarded iron chest by Serbian farmer Nero Vun, close to the Hungarian town of Nagzimitklos in July 1799. Experts think that the 23 gold vessels that make up the hoard were buried inside the chest somewhere between the years 795 and 803. Nobody's truly sure who made these fabulous ornamental pieces. Perhaps there are some clues within the inscriptions on their surfaces, but nobody's ever been able to translate them in full. The writing appears to be a strange blend of ancient Greek and runiform script and doesn't create coherent sentences. Some historians believe the treasures were created by the Avars, but that doesn't really help us. The Avars were a nomadic culture of which little is known, including their origin and language so we understand even less about them than we do about the treasure they may or may not have created. Marie Antoinette is best known for being the French queen who allegedly said, let them eat cake, when she was told her people had no bread to eat. But perhaps she ought to have been just as well known for her astonishing jewelry collection. 
The fact that she was so disastrously out of touch with the mood of her nation during troubled times is unsurprising. She was the daughter of Holy Roman Empress Maria Theresa and the wife of King Louis XVI of France, so she was as aristocratic as anyone who's ever lived. When she was executed in October 1793, the event was seen as symbolic of the victory of the French revolutionaries. Her massive jewelry collection disappeared from public view shortly after her execution. But as of late 2018, it's come out of the shadows, and some of it is even headed to auction houses. Items that went under the hammer that year included a huge pearl pendant, pearl necklaces, pearl earrings, and fine diamond pieces. The highlight of the whole collection is a diamond and pearl pendant, somewhat unimaginatively known as Queen Marie Antoinette's Pearl, and is worth $2 million on its own. Most of the items are thought to have been packed away by the queen and sent abroad ahead of her attempt to flee, but she never got the chance. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.